Thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're in chapter 16 now of the Gospel of Matthew, and we've changed the scene. We've left Gentile territory, and we've gone to a place uh, where there are uh, religious authorities who oppose him. So in verse 1, the Pharisees and Sadducees came to test Jesus, and this is a similar complaint, assuming that these came from Jerusalem as opposed to the Galilean Pharisees and Sadducees, because it's basically the same issue. They say, uh, uh, show us a sign. And, and there have been lots of signs. He's fed people. Uh, he's uh, healed the sick. He said, uh, you know, cast out demons. Uh, lots of things he has done, but they want a, another sign to authenticate his work. So he gives them a sign, and this is really similar. Uh, first of all, he chastises him a bit. He says, when it's evening, it'll be fair weather, the sky's red. In the morning, it'll be stormy because the sky's threatening. You've heard the saying, you know, uh, uh, red sky in morning, sailors take warning. I, I use that pretty often. When the sky's red, red in the morning, morning, look out, it's gonna rain. So he says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you can't interpret the signs of the times. You don't know what's right in front of you. And so he says, an evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it. And he said this before, but the sign of Jonah. And he left him and he went away. Why don't you comment on that son? Well, uh, you're right. I, the, the book has become the sealed document. And it just goes to show that really hardness of heart blocks what the Lord wants you wants to do with you or right. want you to understand and that's why he tells us over and over again that we need a humble and contrite heart we can't go to him in in this arrogant confidence and tell him how to fix stuff right uh, what we need to ask is for him to fix us yeah. because we've realized that we're broken yeah and that's pretty much what he's telling the Pharisees here and he says the real sign of this day mm -hmm. is the most amazing thing that is ever going to happen in history right right I'm going to raise from the dead in three days yeah 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 and really the resurrection is the singularly most dynamic thing that has ever happened on earth yeah so let's let's in put this idea, the sign of the times. Uh, there are lots of people who are trying to interpret the signs of the times Boy, in 2024. Okay. Yeah, lots of people. And I, uh, let me just say, one of the things we can do is to read the Bible daily, uh, maybe stay away from YouTube interpreters, and to say, Lord, show me what you're up to in my life today. Uh, and, and you know, there are lots of there are lots of schemes. And Rudy, you might have some thoughts on what the Lord's up to at the end time, because you spend more time thinking about that than I do. I do, but you know, even though I believe that the Lord has shown me a lot, He never gave me a date. No, no. So basically, Lord, show me what you're doing so I can what? So I can respond to it. Uh, one of the things I do is I try to pray about it. You know, I, that's one of the things I, I can make a difference there in prayer. And I hope you would too. You want to comment on that and we'll move to the next section? Well, you know, when you, when you if, if you really want to bring it right up to today uh, and this interpretation, you know, there are, Israel and really a lot of Christians are hoping for a red heifer, you know, yeah. and and you know the reason that the, this is discussed is that one of one of the truths about heaven is death can't be in heaven, mm -hmm. and so the the way this is kind of uh, weeded out in the law is that if you've touched a dead body. You have to go through this eight-day cleansing because this priest can't come into 
can't come in contact with the Holy of Holies if he has death on him. So ultimately what this, what this is talking about is everybody's done that. Everybody's mm -hmm. touched death. Mm -hmm. And death can't be, because for Jews, the only place that communication happens with the creative universe is the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. It's not the same for Christians because of Pentecost, mm -hmm. which is June 11th. Uh, Based uh, off of Passover. Exactly. Based off the lunar calendar, right. the Jewish calendar. So, I'm sorry, I made you lose your train of thought. You did. And, uh, <laughs> you can kick me under the table. The red heifer, and because death can't enter, right. death has no place in the kingdom. Right. So, in order for somebody to officiate or anybody to be able to help officiate, they have to have the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled on them on the first day, the third day, and the seventh day in order to officiate in the eighth. And that basically, that's why people are looking for this perfectly red cow that is three years old, that has never had a yoke on it. Uh, and you can't start the sacrificial system without death. Exactly, because death can't enter heaven. Right. I mean, the second death is what really we're talking about here. And this is... The second death is separation from God forever. And if you have death on you in a, in a spiritual sense, you can't enter the kingdom. Right. And this is preparatory to the end time. Exactly. Even though it hasn't happened, there is hope in thinking about it because maybe not in my generation, maybe not in my kids' or my grandkids' generation does that happen. But I know that it will. Yeah. There you go. So he says, you don't know how to interpret the signs of the times. And that's probably a pretty good statement for the world we're living in right now. We don't know how. But we, we can look for the miracles of Jesus around us and trust him. So uh, I have friends who previously were criminals. They were addicted. Uh, there's one man who spent a lot of time in Leavenworth, who's a friend of mine. Leavenworth, for those of you who aren't familiar with our area, is a federal prison. Uh, and yet he is a, a dynamic, young servant of the Lord, somebody I can call on. Hallelujah. You know, and, and that is one of God's miracles. You know, I could give you a whole list of others. So we maybe can't see what God's doing in the big picture, but we need to see what he's doing in the, in the here and now. Let's think about that and I'll pray. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your work with us. Help us, please, just to see what you're up to and may we respond to it. And Lord, I, I pray for folks like Rudy who, who do understand the signs of the times to some degree uh, in, the, in the long term. Lord, help us to know how to respond to what you're showing us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.